Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, another session of Survival of the Fittest. You just listened to Mob Deep with that the, with the song with just that name. So uh, it's Friday morning, and today I'm a bit scared because we have just been well. I've been talking to the panelists, and they are very much awake and a bit crazy. So I'm not sure where we are heading this hour, but I'm looking forward to it. And uh, let's start with the, the, the one and only Joachim Samuelsson, the group CEO of Crunchfish. Good morning. Good morning, Johan. Good to see it, you. Yes, it's, it's a well, now you're a bit settled, I can see. Yeah. So, good so, morning, Johan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it easy. Well, uh, we had a good 10 minutes of just, well, chatting around just uh, just recently so i'm i'm feeling uh, uh, well uh, not frustration joy and happiness within the room so what can you tell us about the next uh, uh, 60 minutes because we have a, a special theme for today yes it's about uh, the crunch fish dna and uh... I think it's an interesting topic. Uh, we, we're going to move a little bit. I, you know, we have our values, uh, but we thought, what? Let's uh, let's take that to the next level. Uh, our DNA, that's sort of to the core. Yes. Uh, so I think it's uh, it, it's, it's going to be yeah, yeah, crunchfish DNA. No, it's it's going to be. Uh, mm. I think it's. Um, let, let's let's try to find out what uh, we're all about and uh, what does it mean. Uh, what, what's the results of having our values? What what does that uh, make crunchfish? So I I, yes. I think yeah, let's let's have a go at that. It's going to yes, be interesting. And and uh, you all, uh, if you've followed this before, you realize uh, that uh, every now and then we talk about digital cash uh, every second week. And then once in a while we talk about gesture. And then we also have once a month, so to say, uh, a focus at just the, 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 the um, corporation, the uh, um, crunch fish. And that's what we are looking at today the overall perspective what are you what are you actually doing what are your goals uh, well what's the feeling being inside crunchfish and what are you aiming at and stuff like that so if you are interested in, in this and if you have any questions please join uh, and contribute through the the chat forum uh, ask your questions and i will be glad to pass them on so let's go around to see who else we got uh, on board today uh, we have the man from uh, Stongby, that's um, a very important part of Skåne, Sweden. Uh, Patrick Lindeberg, CEO of Crunchfish Digital Cash. Good morning. Good morning, Johan. How are Actually, you today? I'm, I'm excellent. Uh, excellent weather, uh, Friday morning. And as you said, we had some good energy going into this. So uh, looking forward to, to this session. Yes, and you will join us uh, after Joachim has had his presentation. And then also uh, a, a warm welcome to Paul Kronholm, founder and CTO of Crunchfish. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good, Thank you. Good morning, man. <laughs> yeah. With, with, and it's Friday, pink shirt Friday. Yes, uh, indeed it is. Uh, this lovely morning uh, down here in the south, we have this uh, splendid sun and sunshine. And we're yeah, just yeah. sprinkled with love, basically. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you have your sunglasses uh, on you. Well, yes. Yes. Prepared. You never know if the sun hits the floor. Well, we, we, we talked with people from India last week and they were not really impressed. But I was, well, the, well, the heat, uh, the warmth. Was it seven degrees centigrade or something last week? Well, it's come now. Now it's uh, we we're, we are in double digits, just just yeah. like India. No difference. <laughs> okay, great. So let's look at the DNA and uh, please join with the questions if you have any. Uh, if you are just looking watching this this uh, seminar uh, webinar, so uh, let's give it to you, uh, Joachim. You bring the story and. Uh, we will listen carefully and I'll come back with questions later. So give it a go. Thank you, Johan. Uh, great to um, have a go at this, actually. It's, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it was Patrick uh, Lindeberg from Stongby who came up with, uh, let's 
let's do a webinar on our DNA. And um, it's, um, I think it's interesting to try to find sort of the heart of it, uh, what, what we're all about. And, uh, and one of the things that we are all about that we've actually put on our front page um, as, as the corporation is, is sort of the um, Darwin and, and his series of being extremely adaptable. Uh, these are the winners. It's not, as he says here, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the most responsive to change. And I, I, I think that yeah. has been, um, th that's the reason why we have it, uh, is that, that that's to the heart, uh, that we are extremely adaptive. Um, we, we have sort of two uh, businesses, Digital Cash and Yesterday Interaction, and we are at uh, the fifth generation of, uh, of product, uh, we we have uh, we, we we sort of really evolved all the time, and and we are in in very fast industries, um, computer vision uh, and uh, digital payments, extremely fast moving uh, industries, and you need to be on your toes. You need to listen to and understand what's going on, and you have you have to be uh, adapting. Otherwise, you have really no chance. Uh, we're a small company, and. Uh, and I think that ability uh, to be adaptive, um, I, I think that goes to the heart of uh, Crunchfish uh, DNA. So uh, thank you very much, Johan. That was my, uh, no, uh, no, I have a few more slides. So um, I, in this presentation, I'll use some of the, uh, I, I, I've been a keen reader in, uh, in, in uh, you know, my previous life, uh, but I, I've been reading a lot. This is a book from 97. So it's uh, 25 years old, but I think it still goes pretty well. I, I think this is, uh, these are some Harvard, Harvard professors that uh, were looking for, or looking at why are some companies uh, extremely much more um, successful than others. And, and, and they found that they, they, uh, they are very disciplined. Uh, and they are disciplined in the way of that they choose uh, one of three things. Because, and, and the reason is that customers or tend to ask for one of those three. You, the, the customers in one category, they either are they are looking for who come with the best product. It's the best, the product leadership is the best product they're looking for. Then there are in the same category, there are some customers that are looking for best price. They don't really care about the best product, but they want something good enough, but they, they certainly want the best price. Or alternatively, they, they, they're looking for someone that will help them no matter what, uh, sort of the best service. That's what they're looking for. And, and this, is, this is the customer's point of view. Uh, and and uh, in a category, there could be, could be all three of them. And, and you, you really need to choose. Um, the worst thing you can do is to, I'm going to build as good product as possible, and I, I have to be the cheapest, and I also have to have the best service. Then you're really stuck in the middle, and, and that's a huge problem. To be stuck in the middle, um, you will not be a market leader. You, you really need to choose because if you don't, um, you won't win the heart of those customers that um, decide on that. We are looking for the best product. Uh, if you are, you know, at the same time trying to deliver best service or best price, you're really not going to cut it. The, the, you will lose. Uh, so you need to choose. And, and one of the things which I think goes to the DNA of Crunchy as well is that we have chosen that we are a product company. We, we're not looking for the being the cheapest because we can't really afford to. We, we, that's not where we compete on. And, and, and we can't really build a whole, uh, the services organization either. We can partner with people who can do that instead uh, to deliver that because it's, it's not like you can't have, you, you, you need still good service and you need to have a reasonable price, but you can have threshold values on those things, but you need to choose one thing. And we have chosen to go for best product. And that, will go to the DNA of the company that uh, everything we do needs to go for building that product leadership. That's, that's what we're about. Uh, the other two categories you can see, um, if you're best price, you, you build operational excellence. You need to really look at your processes all the time and you, you have to save money all the time because otherwise you can't deliver best price. And likewise, if you're a services company, you have to really think, how can I be as intimate to my customers as possible? That's not what we're looking for at Crunchfish, but we are looking for product leadership. 
that's what we do. There are other companies. Apple is a good example. Certainly best, uh, best products. Um, not cheapest, uh, not sort of best service, but they, they, they deliver best product. That's sort of another sort of example there. And that's, I think, is, is also to the core of uh, the DNA of, um, of uh, Crunchfish. If, if I look at sort of now, uh, this is linking it back a little bit to what we do. Um, we, we have this augmenting payments we have started with. And, and in, in some sense, Crunchfish is all about augmenting products. We are um, augmenting sort of other people's products. We are selling, Crunchfish is selling to other businesses that that in turn are selling into the consumer markets. We are um, yeah, B2B uh, company that then our customers, they are selling to the end market. And if, if I look here for our two businesses, Digital Cash and Yesha, the current market that we have gone into is that for payments, it's all about online payments. The whole world, when, when it went digital, well, it, it went online. That's all, that, that's certainly what, what we are looking at. It, it's for card payments, but also for real-time payments. It's sort of online. And, and, and the play we did uh, in the market uh, where we started here is to, well, you probably need offline payments as well. And the reason, why do you need offline payments? Well, you need to deliver that 100% payment availability. That's what we sort of, that's our, to the core of, of what, what we offer. And, and this is an interesting market coming up here when the central banks wants to issue uh, digital cash, uh, CBDC, central bank digital currency. Uh, in my opinion, it needs to be an offline play because otherwise you're not replacing cash, which certainly is, is offline. Uh, and the digital version of cash needs to be uh, offline as well. And, and that's sort of where, where we're focused there. Likewise on, on Gestia, where we are augmenting payments as well, we currently we're, we're looking at augmenting industrial applications. Uh, this is where the market is. Unfortunately, the volumes are not great there. It, it's not um, enormous volumes. And, and what we are looking for for the future there is when this moves to consumer products. And, and there's sort of essentially two, two areas, uh, which are the biggest opportunities for Crunchfish. One is that when those glasses, you can see both uh, the man here on the left um, in the warehouse, he's, he's wearing sort of uh, AR glasses. But likewise, uh, you can see what, what it will look like. This is real glasses. Um, when, when that consumer market comes, then we are ready uh, to deliver uh, interaction with gestures. But there is also another area that we've been talking to recently, and that's the automotive industry. Here, the regulators are putting demands on car manufacturers that you need to have much better control over what the, um, the driver and all the, the people in, in the car is happening. And, and you need sort of cameras to do that. And I think we are very strong in that as well. So. But we're waiting for that, to augment products uh, for the consumer market. Um, so we're about products, but we're also about augmenting other people's products. That, that's what we are all about, really. Because we're looking to the future, um, and because we are a small company, we, we, we need to protect our ideas. We are very creative. Uh, we're coming up with a lot of ideas. And, and this is also to the heart of what Crunchfish does, is that we, we protect our innovations. We innovate a lot, and we need to protect that. If you get a patent, you have a protection for 20 years. Uh, and that's a long time. Um, and um, I, if I break it up here into the two business areas, in the, in the area of digital cash, the company that Patrick is the CEO of, we have uh, 31 innovations, different ideas, and we've already been granted 19 patents. Some of them are in uh, social application and some is for proximity. And I'll, I'll um, actually, the next webinar, we'll, we'll do a deep dive to explain the uh, digital cash, uh, yeah, extremely strong, I would say, patent portfolio. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, do a deep dive next, next Friday. But on Gestia, uh, a little bit of an older uh, patent portfolio, uh, 12 innovations there, but all are granted. So we, we have uh, 12 out of 12 uh, granted patents everywhere. And it's also a, a, strong, a strong portfolio. But that's also to the core of Crunchfish, uh, that we started early uh, to protect our ideas. And uh, we've been very successful. 
being a small company, we have, we have more sort of patents. If you put this together, 19 plus 12, 31. Uh, we have more patents than we have people in the company, which is unusual. All right. Um, another thing, uh, another book. Um, this is a, it's a great British uh, brand expert, uh, Adam Morgan, which I met sort of 15 years ago at the conference. And um, this was long before Crunchfish, but he, he has a company called Eat Big Fish. And uh, I think he, his claim to fame was that when he, he came with this book, Eating the Big Fish. And it's all about to be a challenger. And, and, and he's talking about this book, how a challenger needs to behave. Because being a challenger is something in his book, what he says, all companies need to be challengers, not just you know, the startups. You certainly, you have no other choice than to try to challenge the status quo. But the challengers can be really, really dangerous for um, you know, the fat and happy, the, the sort of the, uh, the big companies. So unless they also adopt a challenger attitude to try to be also fast and nimble, um, they, they won't be able to survive uh, against these challengers because the challengers are fast. I think, well, I think it was Jack Welsh from GE who said, there's only two types of company, the quick and the dead. Uh, and, and so you really need to have that culture within your company to, to, be, uh, to be that challenger. And, and I think we, um, a lot of that trait on being a challenger, uh, I think we have here at Crunchfish. So that's also part of the DNA, being a challenger, because we are small and we, we are uh, challenging uh, big industries uh, and you need to behave in a certain ways. And uh, Adam uh, captures that really well. Um, there, there are ways to try to understand the crunch fish or culture and, and our DNA. And that's actually to look at our interviews. On our website, we have crunch fish webinars, but if you go to the bottom there, you, you will find, uh, we have actually 55 interviews, all did last year, uh, about half, a, half an hour long. So this is, um, there's so many. And I believe every single one of those interviews capture uh, our DNA. So you, you, you can almost take anyone uh, and, and look, and if you really are interested in, in some of uh, what, what is the DNA of crunchfish, and I think it, it, it comes through in, in, in some of those here. Here, this is just, uh, this is our, our leadership here, uh, which has been part of this interview series, but, but it's also been some externals. And I, I think there are some, uh, you see here, Paul in the uh, bottom left corner, uh, who, uh, yeah, on his, on his uh, business card, he he, he doesn't want to have CTO or founder. He thought that was a bit uh, yeah, dull. So he has artists instead. I think that's part of the Crunchfish DNA to, to sort of to allow yourself to, uh, you know, a little bit more expressive freedom. Um, I put the one, if you see the bottom right corner, uh, Magnus Lagerson. Uh, he was at that time at Swish. You know, he, he, he was the, he's been the product lead for Swish for, uh, yeah, uh, since they started really. Uh, but I, uh, I remember when we did this interview, we did, I put that uh, title uh, that he is a real time pirate because Magnus has always been a pirate, uh, uh, a, a guy that behaves a little bit, you know, uh, sets his own rules and, um, and moves a lot. And uh, he fits the Crunchfish DNA as well. We've always seen ourselves uh, also being, uh, you know, pirates. But I, what I'll do, uh, I'll... I'll play a clip here from uh, one of the interviews uh, with my uh, sort of dear friend, Paul here, the founder and the CTO of the company. And um, let, let's have a, just um, a little clip. And I, I thought it was fun because he, he does talk about the DNA of Crunchfish. But otherwise, the, basically the DNA from with Crunchfish from the beginning has to be, uh, it's in, to do things that are seen impossible almost in a way. Uh, but also to do it differently. So, so, so you find something, a gem, and, and maybe people say it's uh, now you cannot do that, but uh, you look at it from a different angle, mm. and then you, you, you see, ah, you can do it like this instead. Mm. And that it can be very simple things, uh, but that, uh, it's also something that has encapsulated how we have worked, I think, in different ways, sure. both on the market, uh, on the tech side. Uh, that is something that always uh, is with us, and I think that's one of our biggest strengths. Yeah, that's a, almost a little uh, trade secret, <laughs> you can say. Uh, don't, don't listen to too many other people what they say, mm. what is possible, not possible. Mm. 
uh, if they say it's impossible, just just find your way to do it. It has never been done, but it will be done. It's never been done, but it will be done. You know, look at big problems. Uh, take it on for a different angle. Um, you know, maybe just a change in perspective could actually sort of change things. And uh, I think that goes to the, the crunchfish DNA because we are we are taking on, um, you know, in a very brave way, I think, uh, big challenges. So we right into the payment industry, which is sort of one of the biggest industries in the world uh, with our digital cash. And I think it's, uh, it's been interesting. Here's another book of Adam. This is, was his second book. Um, as you can see here, um, Building a Challenger Brand Culture. And it's all about what, what is the culture, sort of the DNA. What does that have to be? And the first quote, uh, which uh, is what I like, is, is something from Steve Jobs. He said he wrote the whole book about this quote, that it's more fun to be a pirate than to join the Navy. That's something Steve Jobs said to his Macintosh team back in um, in the 80s when, when they sort of started. It's more fun to actually work here at Apple than to uh, you know work at IBM, I guess, who were the Navy at that time. And, and I this book, I think, uh, talks about how you have to sort of also behave. What, what is the culture you build up uh, when you're pirates, really? Pirates, is, it's, it is that because they had a very strong code of conduct, strong values, because otherwise you won't survive uh, being you know, out there on the seven seas um, and uh, just trying to you know, make, a, make a living, really. And, and, and I, I think that's uh, certainly, I think, um, country we are a pirate ship uh we're out there globally on the seven seas and i am i i think magnus Lagerson, as i said he always seemed himself as, as a pirate but he was still owned by the uh, the member banks uh and he said well and that's more the navy to work at the banks swish i think it's a pirate ship but uh, he he said it was fun actually to join countries to, to re mm. not just to swim in the swedish lakes but to actually go out to the seven seas um and um uh, and and that's why i think magnus fits us so well because uh, at heart he is sort of a pirate one one thing that i i picked up from this book is um is that to succeed in any anything, even if it's a, your entrepreneur or an entrepreneur or what, what what you need, you need to have some key roles. You you need to find those key roles and you need to drive that. And and he had put some funny names on it. But um, one one role you really really need is that you need an idea hamster, someone who is in the company and just extremely creative, uh, coming up with new ideas. Uh, and and this this could be in the area of marketing, but but certainly also in the, the idea as a product company extremely important to have that in the, uh, in the area of, um, of products, to come up with new ways to look at things. And we have an idea hamster, uh, and that's Paul uh, sitting next to me here, uh, our, uh, our CTO uh, and founder, and he's just an uh, enormous sort of uh, uh, source for ideas and creativity. Uh, so um, check on that one. Then he said, you need a denter. Uh, and then there, there, there's someone who wants to put a dent in the world, who has a bit thick forehead uh, and, and is not afraid to think that we can change the world. We can make a dent in the world, really. And I guess I'm the one. I, I'm the one that has that uh, characteristic that I am, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm courageous enough and I guess crazy enough to say that we will change the world. And I think we will. I, I think we are on to something really, really great. Uh, and um you you need to believe that and you need to do whatever is you know need to be get done otherwise nothing will happen here so you need a denter mm -hmm. but these two roles the idea hamster and dentist they um, yeah they throw up things and, and there's a lot of things to capture uh, or to to handle and and in order to handle all these loose threads um because then only Paul and me together won't make a company. You need someone who can take care of everything that uh, all this uh, that we are, uh, yeah, all this we are sort of creating here. And you need, and this is uh, Adam Morgan's term, an implementation rhino. And there we have uh, from Stongby, uh, Patrick Lindeberg. Uh, he's the implementation rhino, certainly within digital cash. There's so much going on. Uh, and Patrick does just an excellent job of capturing everything and holding it all together. Because it wouldn't wouldn't have worked with just ideas and, and a dancer. You need someone who uh, who can implement, and and we have that in uh, Patrick. And likewise, I would say we have in in Joachim Niedermark uh, on the gesture side. 
just an enormous sort of strength uh, who can implement and, uh, and, and make sure things happen. Adam Morgan also mentioned of, um, another role, and which is not part of the operational team, but you need someone who protects the teams. You need a sponsor. That's what he, I think he calls it. And uh, we have one. Uh, we have one in uh, Joran Linder, the uh, chairman of Crunchfish. He is, is certainly our sponsor, you know, very long term. Uh, and, and he just protects us. Uh, I, I think it, it was just very obvious in the last sort of financing round that uh, Joran certainly took his share. And, uh, and also during, I think, the, um, when, when uh, people were signing up for uh, these units, uh, Joran actually protected the share price by, by he, he bought some uh, bought some extra share. He felt he, if I can buy for 25, now when it's felt under 25, well, I continue buying. And I, I think that was important for all shareholders and for the company. But Joran is just great. I, I think he's, um, he's uh, re- really important for us. Uh, and um, hooray for Joran. I'm, I'm actually heading uh, to Stockholm because he, we celebrate him. He's, he's turning 60. At heart, he's only 29, but uh, he's turning 60. So we're going to celebrate him in tomorrow up in Stockholm, actually. So thanks to Joran. But we, this is the roles that Adam describes, and we, we sort of have it here, here at Crunchfish. This is the third book of Adam Morgan again. Uh, you can see that at the top right there, the Eat Big Fish. Uh, this is uh, the, his company. And he's put out 10 different narratives 10 strategies. Uh, if you are a challenger company, what, how do you need to behave? Um, because you can be different types of challengers. And, and the one of these 10s that fits countries really well, and that is what uh, Adam Morgan calls the dramatic disruptor. This, of all these ch- narratives, this is the one that is, has most product and services that you, you're bringing something at heart. The other ones, you, you could be uh, other types of challengers as well, but the one which has product at heart, challenging the status quo of saying that you actually have something which is superior to the incumbent, that is what a dramatic disruptor d- uh, do. And, and, and they are playing on drama, visually drama, to try to sort of make, you know, to challenge and to make yourself heard. Uh, that you are coming with something different, and and uh, and we have used that. Uh, I think this this is uh, now you on uh, your fuse is back here. Really, I, I think we this was to tell a story to the central banks that you have a choice. You have a choice how you you want to implement your uh, sort of your wholesale uh, CBDC or back end CBDC. You can either complicate things uh, to you know do. Uh, a digital token, just like you have a physical token of a banknote, you can do a digital token and you create a money pressing machine uh, and uh, you do it and you, you're going to complicate things for the banking infrastructure. That's the blue pill. You could do it that way or you can do something different. You can just rely on the uh, payment rails that exist today. You don't have to change anything really. You just need the offline part and we are bringing that. That's the, the red pill. And um, this visualization of using is something here for, just to emphasize here dramatically that there is a choice. Just like Morpheus says to a Neo really, there is a choice here, blue pill or red pill. And, and we sort of have used that uh, to be dramatic. And I think it goes to, to the heart of it really. There is also a little hint, the red pill is bigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The cherry tomato. I, yeah. I, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I it's know. a hint. It's a hint. Yeah. yeah. Take the take the red one. Take yeah. me. Take yeah. me. Yeah. Um, last one, and then, and then we're wrapping it up. It really is. Is sort of. Uh, I think this is interesting as well because I think there there is a great book. Peter Thiel. He's one of the uh, from the PayPal mafia uh, that started uh, PayPal in 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 back, and he. He, he talks about how to build a future, and, and he, he has written a book about zero to one. It's a good book to to get as well, and and he talks about to create something from nothing, and and I think this is where certainly you need an idea hamster like Paul here, and and I think a denter as well, uh, because it, it's about to take something which doesn't exist to to sell to the first customer, uh, to to bring it to one deal. We are so close now to that, uh, certainly in India. Uh, where, where we have worked the longest now, and uh, it's just um, exciting. But after you've done that, you need to start 
to go from one to n. You need to replicate this, you know, so many times. So currently, we 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 actually need to, um, you know, we we still have to be creative, but but we have to soon change for going from taking this one deal and replicate it so many times. And I I think um, I couldn't think of anyone better than having Patrick here on our side who who can help because this is going to be a lot of detail uh, in order to do that. But it's there's two phases here: zero to one. Uh, I, I think pa- Paul and I we excel at that this sort of uh, phase, but then w- then we have to sort of scale it up, and that's the one to end. Mm-hmm. So bringing bringing it all together, we we have talked in the past about our values. Um, uh, we had that in a previous webinars. We countries we have three C's. We are very curious, very curious about our surroundings, uh, very curious about learning things and understanding things. We. We take that uh, and um, we being creative. We, we we come up with things, and um, I, I think the whole atmosphere is, is that we're caring. We're very caring for our customers. We're caring for uh, internally for our our uh, own people. We're caring. We feel we are caring about our or our shareholders. I we are no listening. We, we're trying to sort of really live those values. But that that this turns into our DNA. I think the, the the curious part is extremely important to understand the environment. So you and then we 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 become then adaptive in that because we we really are trying to have our ear to the the ground. What what's going on? What we do we need to do in these very fast moving industries? The creative part, yeah, we do it in a dramatic way. We we're trying to be uh, disruptive. Uh, this sort of dramatic disruptive. Uh, disruptor, and and uh, I think that goes to the nature of countries as well. And the caring, yeah, we are augmenting. We are making products, making businesses, making our, you know, we we are augmenting. We we're making something better. I think that goes a little bit with the caring. I know I, w- I was trying to squeeze this in. I know Paul said that. I know you you feel a bit bad that you couldn't get all in starting with an A, and yeah. uh, and I did. Yeah, but. Um, there, are, there is another way also. You can start with D as well, all of them. <laughs> yeah. Change two. Sometimes that's easier, actually. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Another perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let, let's see here. Yeah, I, I think that sort of wraps it up. I don't know if that sort of um, captures our uh, DNA, but uh, being adaptive, Darwin style, uh, winning in that way, ex- dramatic disruptor, uh, and uh, augmenting businesses, augmenting um products, augmenting payments, you name it. That's what we're all about. So thank you, Yuan. I think that well, uh, sums it up. Well, thank you. It's always very inspiring to listen to your, well, when you're uh, talking from your heart, as you always do, and uh, you get the feeling of, of crunch fish. So uh, I'm very satisfied, but I have some questions, of course, because we have, uh, well, we have almost well, half an hour to go. And I'm a bit curious, so uh, let's invite the, the the other panelists here and talk about well the, the message you just um, um, posted. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, balancing uh, because you need to be very well. You you, you told us you're a, a quite small company, but you're high ambitions. Uh, you are creative and you're confident, but it's always it's it's, it's where where do we get to the to, to the well, the, how do, how much do you balance? You need to show well, uh, really facts where you're heading because otherwise it just will be be talking. How much? Uh, um, what kind of line do we have when it comes to that? Do you understand my question, Joachim? No. I mean, I mean, uh, I think sorry, I, I think I, think I understand I, it. So okay. You're right. I, no, no, no. All right, I, Make, I can give it. A, I can give. It I'm a just try. a small picture of you. Okay, Patrick, go for it. Yeah, I think I understand it. I can give it a try at least, and uh, if I'm not right, then you you can ask again. But uh, I was actually thinking about uh, during your news presentation, I, I was thinking about these key roles, the three key roles he he described. How how very well that is a description of of. Uh, how we work and and who we are, and I, I was thinking about a a real case. Uh, w- one of the webinars we've had with uh, with Vicky, uh, where um, uh, Paul, as the idea hamster, he he was the one realizing, okay, we we are to execute our our stuff in an unsecure mobile phone. We we need to find some some way of doing this in a secure environment. He was. Uh, uh, looking for ideas, browsing the net, uh, looking for potential partners, and he found Viki. 
and he took the first contacts. He got the idea and, and he reached out to them. He had the first talks uh, and then uh, I came in. Uh, I'm the implement, uh, implementation rhino. rhino, the rhino. Yeah, 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 the rhino. So then I came in uh, to kind of formalize uh, that relation, uh, create uh, agreements, and and then continue working with them. As you saw in our in our webinar, we we now have a very strong relation, and we have also extended it to not not only being a supplier of crunchfish, we're actually using them as a sales channel in uh, in Southeast Asia. So I, I think this that we have different roles and we come in at different stages. Um, that's that's how we balance. Uh, yeah, and 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 also uh, it was very well. We had these webinars and so, uh, once in a while we have people joining in from Singapore or India, and it's I believe it's very good for the story to hear other people talk about crunchfish because well. You are very inspiring, but it's also good to hear from, well, they don't have to say you are good. How important is that to, to, to get the story from, from, from other people? Paul? Yeah, of course. And I, 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 that's extremely important. And that's why we are here. <laughs> we are here for uh, because there is a need. So, so, I mean, it's one thing to have IDs, for instance, but uh, it is actually very need driven so we identify something that that is actually lacking or is has to be solved uh, commercially actually and then we we uh, basically solve that uh, i can i mean and it's quite funny because we can quote many but uh, there there was a physicist uh, feynman dr feynman he, he was very famous he was uh, uh, in the manhattan project but he also did a lot of other stuff uh, theoretical physics uh, but among other things, uh, one thing he said was, okay, you have a problem, you write down the problem, then you think very hard, and then you write down the solution. So it's quite simple. It's only three steps. But uh, so, so, uh, uh, and that's Stop. maybe not, yeah. And maybe that's not something that we regularly uh, practice in school in the right way. Because in school, we tend to often have uh, the correct answer, so to speak. So then we go into the thing that you can solve things in many different ways as well. So, so uh, and Feynman did that often. He solved it once and then he solved it twice, and maybe third, uh, three times. And doing so, he could actually get into those different perspectives. He was solving something real, a need, but he solved it in various ways. And in that journey, he discovered new things. Um, that's an important thing. But uh, what I would like to say is that this is, it's a need-driven process. And where, where do we get the need from? Yeah, that's typically Joachim. Uh, he, he's out talking to a lot of people. And he sees that, OK, here is something they are lacking. We, we, this we can do certainly do a bit better. And then we take that home. And then we basically write down the problem, <laughs> think very hard, and then we solve it. Uh, so so, so um, like the the answer is basically it's need driven. So so that gives us the focus and uh, the priority. And to get the well, need, uh, you have to listen to the customers. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, during these last months, I've realized Joachim's the, he has plenty of needs. Yes. Well, he needs a lot of help. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Joachim, Joachim, well, yeah. I, 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 I love your way of well, you're being a, a, a magnificent storyteller. And, and you bring people along and you really inspire. But I mean, when, you, when it comes to script writing, there's a saying, show, don't tell. Do you, do you think there's a, well, could it be a problem being very good at storytelling when it comes to, to delivery? How important is that you, will you come up with, well, these inventions and these patents just to, to fill the story? Well, you, you, you can't, um... You, you have to deliver value. You, you can't just have a story. Uh, but, but, but I think you, you, need, uh, you need to do, to do both. You, you need to sort of, I, I think I, something in, in my, you know, another thing I remember now is that uh, I worked at Ericsson. All Ericsson people uh, being in sales, they, they were, they were uh, trained in something they call power-based selling. And power, uh, you get power by two things. You get it from the perception that you create value, but you, you also have to create value. So you, you need to deliver as well. You need to deliver value times 
other people's perception of that you deliver value. So you need to do both. If, if no one knows you're delivering value, there, there's no point really, because uh, you, you won't have any power in that. But you can't just also tell a story uh, and not deliver anything as well. And, and I think right now at Crunchfish, I think we are, it, it's really, you know, yeah, we the patterns we have in order to protect ourselves because we are a small company, we come up with great things and we need we need that protection in order to, to sort of be be the one that that actually can exploit those ideas, but we we I think everybody's waiting. Uh, I think we have a lot of shareholders that are waiting for okay, deliver, please do that uh, because I, we, I think we have spin a story many times and and um, we we need to start delivering and and yeah. we are very close uh, and and I think um, it's uh, we work in big industries, we work with big companies, and um, I, I think we are getting the endorsements right now that we we feel that we yeah we're gonna deliver on this, and it's it's just uh, it's just a matter of time when we are, you know, pushing this over the edge that uh, we can announce what what is actually cooking, and uh, but, and uh, it, it is very exciting. We we feel so. Uh, yeah, of course. I, will, I would like to add also that uh, it's not uh, only about us. So, so, so the thing here is also that uh, we, have a, we have a market that is moving incredibly fast. There is coming new needs, we have to solve new things. And the big companies, they have already a, a, a position and they have to protect that position. And they do so by taking in innovation from, from smaller companies. That's a typical process. But then you have this tension between new things that are coming in and at the same time protecting your market share. So there is a quite complicated decision change, change in, in, in our uh, customer level. So actually we are absolutely not waiting for us. We are waiting for the positive um, uh, decision to go ahead. They know that it's valuable, but you, you have to also see that uh, it's quite a, a big, big projects. So when they go from zero to one, yeah, then it's a different story. We will see that we will have so many projects going on. So that's what we are waiting for. So, so it's a it's a little bit bigger bigger perspective, I, I would say, uh, and that's why it takes time. But uh, on okay. the other hand, yeah. Uh, uh, going back to your to your presentation, uh, you, Kim. Well, you you used the big words: the uh, product leadership and market leadership. So, how far do you think you've come towards mar pro product leadership and market leadership when it comes to digital cash and just interaction? Um, well, I, I, I think in the um, we, we certainly don't have market leadership yet, but we, I, I think we are establishing ourselves uh, as thought leaders. Um, and, and, uh, and, and that's what we need to do now in the beginning. We need to be fast and we need to be thought leaders and seen like that. That's why we need to be dramatic so we, we get our word out. Um, but but if, if you could uh, then take it to the next level, uh, getting the value out, and that's being proven and seen in the market. You can move very, very quickly from and scaling that up from being, um, you know, having uh, strong ideas and and being someone uh, in the market that, uh, you know, is is uh, it's a new player. But 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 if you if you move then this fast, you could you can accelerate quite quite well from and actually capture. Um, a, a big chunk of this because we, we we started with offline payments long before I think people really were realizing that this is actually uh, that uh, you probably there, there has been some attempts I shouldn't say that we were the first one but but I think the way we've done it and and that's proven with our, that the patent portfolio we'll talk about next week but but I think the way we've done it I think we we've, we've so we cracked it to resolve it in a way that I think will make a difference that it actually will work uh, to to go about offline payments if I take that area uh, in the way we we perceive so that that's that's exciting really so uh, so so uh, so in, <clears throat> when it comes to time how far away is it when we have kids all around the world wearing t-shirts with a crunchfish logo um I don't know uh, if uh, but, but, but I but, but I think we will I, I, I think um, you know, it, things change. Uh, look, look at sort of, uh, I, I was the first sort of Tesla owner in the southern Sweden. I had a Tesla back in 2012. Uh, yeah. I remember Elon at that time, uh, you know, he was an entrepreneur and a lot of people were saying, well, this won't work. Tesla will never be anything. He's the richest man in the world now. Uh, it's, it's 10 years later. He's the richest man in the world. And uh, his company is worth more than all the other car manufacturers in the world together. 
And but he came from nothing. He came with a, you know, everything was, look at it, everything was sort of uh, petrol. He saw it needs to be electricity. Uh, so he, 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 he came with something new, something different. I say, yeah. well, everything is online, but it actually needs to be offline as well. And, and we are complementing, uh, augmenting everybody else. So um, th- th- we have a play which is interesting here as well, but, and, and it could go quickly. I think uh, things move around uh, quickly, um, do, more than we realize, actually. Do you, do you, is it possible to have an idea of when, when you will become market leader or could it, well, we're humble, we don't know. We could be next year, could be five years from now. The, 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 well, the exciting thing is that we are in India uh, because India, you know, almost, they're so big, 1.4 billion people. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, they're now, it, when it comes to mobile payments that, you know, everybody thinks that it's China which leads the world. But India, they passed China in 2000, I think, 18. Uh, they then were at par with mobile payments. But now they are twice as big in India when it comes to payment volume as, as China. And, and they are by far uh, the biggest. When it comes to mobile payments, we are, we are talking to banks in India who do more transactions than all the American banks combined when it comes to mobile payments. They, they, it's sort of huge uh, in India. And, and we are there. We are talking to the biggest banks, we're talking to the biggest payment services, we're even talking to the central bank of India. Uh, and and uh, they, they, I think they understand that we have a valuable position, which is interesting. And if we, we succeed there, it's like the Frank Sinatra song, if you can make it there in New York, you make it everywhere. And I think if we make it in India, being the biggest market where everybody's looking, where everybody's there, you know, we're going to take this global. Uh, and I think India couldn't think of a better place to start. That's why we are in India. Okay, well, and I'm thinking of a lot of Frank Sinatra songs just to come up with another, uh, but I didn't get any any new, uh, well, uh, titles that could fit in here. Uh, I will think about that. So I'm thinking about a competition. Uh, if you tell us about the competition, both when it comes to, to digital cash, but also gesture, uh, well, uh, what are the situation? Let's start with Patrick. Patrick. Uh, but as as uh, Joachim, Joachim said, this is still uh, very early days. Uh, and I think the competition we are facing right now is that the, the payment services, the companies we work with, that we, we have products that uh, we can augment their services with, they might have done things on their own. So I think mainly today it's, it's, it's a play towards internal efforts uh, rather than seeing that there are uh, different companies out there doing the same things that uh, we are. Because as we have talked about through these uh, webinars, we, we are agnostic to payment services, to p- payment uh, rails. Uh, we are very independent in, in, in that sense. Whereas some some of the players might have done things on their own that they cannot spread to 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 their competition. So, right now we're we're not seeing uh, from from our view and and how we do business, we're not seeing that much uh, competition actually. And, and that, uh, uh, that, that is also brings us the opportunity to become like the Intel inside. You, you know, Intel is is also business to to business. It's it's not a consumer product, but it's 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 a brand that people knows about. Because it's it augments it augments the, the laptop it, it augments uh, mobile devices through through their product so we I actually see that we we have the possibility to take a similar role with uh, within the payment market that we okay. we augment these companies existing services but from a competition perspective. Uh, it, it's not much it, it, that's that's not uh, that's not an issue as as of now. So, and, and when you come to the uh, gesture interaction, uh, is the situation the same? I think, mean, Joachim, uh, you're better equipped to, to take that as, as I'm, I'm focusing in solo. Yeah, I understand. On, so, Joachim, Paul? Uh, yeah, um, the, um, I, I think the, the way that our very small team there as well, development-wise, I think the, 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 the dedicated focus we've had on gestures for about 10 years has, um, has, has made that we are uh, very, very strong in that, this very niche, uh, augmenting products with 
an extremely efficient uh, gesture interaction. And, and that is it's not many companies who have sort of cracked it in a way. We, we are talking to, to the biggest companies in the world uh, around this, that we are complementing. The problem a little bit is that this market is not as huge as the uh, digital uh, payment space. Uh, so, so, but, but, but it's still uh, an, an interesting area. Uh, and, and I think now when consumer products are starting to be becoming a reality, the big, big companies are looking at, okay, what can we do in this area to, to actually be strong, both in the automotive space, as well as for augmented um, uh, reality uh, glasses, uh, smart glasses. So I, I, I think, again, competition is not huge. This is extremely niche, the, what we do. But uh, um, so far, the, the market hasn't been huge either. But as I said, it's more been industrial applications, but it, it, it's heating up because uh, you need this component, uh, very efficient uh, gesture interaction for um, uh, these two um, use cases that, that I described. Uh, well, uh, thank you. We're just, uh, uh, we have about 10 minutes left. I'm curious about how it is to work on the inside because you get a feeling it's very uh, much innovation. Uh, well, it, great fun, uh, the people I've met, uh, well, f funny, open people. So, what kind of people are you are you searching for? Who who are working uh, at Crunchfish at the moment, and uh, how does this uh, well come into the the culture of the company? Um, uh, Paul. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's actually quite easy. Again, <laughs> uh, the trick is to find them, of course. But but uh, normally, it is actually the reversed way. People find us. So so there are people that that are sticking out in some way. And that leads to diversity. But the trick is to handle diversity. It can be a very good slogan. Yeah, we are a diverse company. We, we think in new ways and all these things. Uh, that's typically a very interesting thing to use. But uh, how do you really use it? So it's a good question. I think that basically is when you talk to a person that before they start at Crunchish, it's a dialogue. So they, they get to know how we function inside also. And they typically realize that they can make a difference themselves within the company. So they get the freedom to operate. They, they get extreme freedom to do their thing. Uh, and some people like that. They take that responsibility and they carry it. Uh, and that's a, an interesting uh, way actually to have an interview with people. We talk about the company, they talk about their, themselves. And then typically we, 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 we quite quickly identify that we have a synergy. Uh, you know, just like love, people meet and then they, they find each other or not. It goes quite quick, I would say. Um, and, and, and then, I mean, after a few weeks, uh, typically in a company, uh, that's what it takes to get a person to run, to do stuff. But in Crunchfish, I would say is, it's like a day and then we are on <laughs> because we have already sorted out is this compatible or not. And then people- You know, will, I, uh, I have the comparison with love all the time. Yeah. It takes a day yeah. and then we're off. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that, that's how, I think that, that, that's how it works, I guess. Uh, I, I'm not, um, I, I would say that uh, for me, love is very spontaneous. So I'm not, uh, I don't have to go through a lot of uh, documents and so on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but also I have maybe I've been lucky enough, but I have met a lot of good people on the way with Crunchfish. Uh, that's another thing I would point out here. So we have had a lot of people working at Crunchfish, um, some very long and some not so long. But basically, all of those people have delivered very exciting things, and they have learned a lot also at the same time. So uh, and that is something we have to remember also that the company is just. You know, it's a gathering of people, but but it's making something, right? So, 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 so here. and and I realize the opportunities that we have here when it comes to to digital cash and, and gesture, yeah. uh, and yeah. I, I see the possibilities, but also yeah. when it comes to gathering the right people, because you have the the, yeah. the storytelling perspective, but also yeah. the deliverance perspective. Uh, yeah. it, do, do you need well when you're picking picking the team? Uh, yeah. When it comes to those two things. Uh, yeah. Do you need special abilities for that? Basically, what we do is we present the team to the one that is going to work, start to work within it. And then it's a joint uh, decision, right? So we talk about the problems we have. So typically, uh, when we have an interview, for instance, it could be that we are actually discussing a real problem at hand. 
So then we see how we reason about it. So we are, we are not basically having a, a formula like saying, okay, we have these five questions and then we are, uh, do you get an A or an F basically? No, we are, we are actually normally talking about real situations that we are at, uh, having at hand. And yeah. then we see if we, we can solve them together on the whiteboard, for instance, or we can talk about them. Uh, and that's how we basically, both of us, both parties, notice if the, this will dance or not. So and I what think, about uh, the, yeah. And what about decision making? Is it mainly, well, through a brain or through your heart where, or, or the gut? Where, where do you, how do you I would decide? Actually, I, yeah, so there we have a combination, right? But uh, actually, I would say, yes, like with love, we take, we have a good instinct at Crunchfish, I would say, what to bet for and uh, what to go for. And when we go for it, there is only one way, and that is to, do, to make it happen. So, so I think we don't have too many plan Bs, actually. We are just doing one thing, and we do it well. That's what I would like to say. And uh, yeah, I would like to take this opportunity also to, uh, if someone here is listening that is thinking about, I would really like to do, do a difference they should uh, contact us. I always say that in the interviews because uh, we are always open for new, uh, new energy and new talents. So uh, please contact us. We are here. Yeah, and, and we, we are hiring. We are looking yeah. for people. So, uh, so that's right. Well, and great. I think, I think the, the core values, uh, Joachim uh, described and we've talked about them before, actually very well describes what we are looking for. Curious, creative, mm. and caring. And yeah. you talked about delivering, that it's important to deliver. And I think that goes with the caring, because if we don't deliver, then we don't care. Then we don't add any, any value. So, so we're looking for people that uh, actually have all, all three of, of them. They're, they're curious to, to understand things, and, and, uh, and they're creative to, to solve problems, but also caring that, okay, what we invented, we also want to bring out, uh, bring out to the world. Mm -hmm. So I think our core values very well describe what, what we are looking for when, when hiring people and uh, trying to attract people with, with those values. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Very nice talking to you. And I'm, I'm going to wrap this up with a, going back to, because we, we always start with survival of the fittest, mob deep, and we talk about Darwin uh, a lot. Well, I don't, I don't talk with, about Darwin so much with anyone more than you, <laughs> you, <I can>. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the world. Every week you remind me, Darwin, Darwinism. So, yeah. well, and then it's it come to the competition. It's not always the best product that wins. It's not always, well, as, as we've been studying Darwinism, but it, you have to, the right muscle to be able to push it to the right growth. And, and so what are your thinking when it comes to, it, from your Darwinistic uh, vocabulary, uh, what, who, how would you describe Crunchfish from now and into the future? You, Joachim, that's yeah, a tricky one. Uh, from, yeah. Um, well, well you're, we're, you're small, we, we but you have the big... Yeah, we, yeah. we are at a very critical stage right now. We, we need to, uh, we talked to zero to one. Um, we, we need to push it over the edge. Uh, that, 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 is, uh, that is key. And we are, the, the opportunities that we have pushed for, for some time, we are we're very at those uh, opportunities to uh, really get it. Uh, when, we, when we get that commitment, uh, and, and you know, we, we, we have sort of got the commitment already because they are you know, doing uh, proof of concept and pilots with us, but, but it's, it, it is to get it to the next level. So the focus is also then to secure uh, success for the ones that we have. But, but, but I, I think then, um, as I said before, uh, we need to scale. Uh, you know, we, we, we're not going to be content uh, with having um, one or two or three. Um, we uh, just like Elon Musk. Uh, he he wants to. He needs to help the world that uh, we can't have fossil uh, in our cars. We need to go electricity. You know, he wants to change the whole world, and he built a company around that. We also want to change the whole world, and we want our you know augment all the payment services, helping all the banks. So and, and this needs a lot of scale, and uh, we are still only a small company, and and we 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 have to have those really big partners that we complement their offering, we augment their offering, and they go out and sell to, you know, the tens of thousands of banks in the world with, with opportunity. And, and we're working with that in parallel uh, in order, because when we now uh, are pushing this over the edge and we can prove how important this is, then it's important to then scale very, very quickly. So we, we reach every corner in the world, really, yeah. starting from India. And, and yeah. I, I think that's where we, this is what's going to happen now.
yeah and and and, and, actually, and to be able and to be able to to scale we, we definitely need to live uh, what darwin said we need to be responsive to to change because we're going to go through a lot of changes as as we grow and as we get more customers yeah, yeah. and and but actually just by following the, the last uh, well months uh, i got a feeling that you when you get well you get contact with someone watching the webinars and then you get a connection and from that you establish a new relationship and now you're going well you got invited to just give us some words you got invited to india this month uh, joachim and uh, that's just recently tell yeah, us yeah, yeah. no yeah and that's what we, we we'll do as i said uh three weeks from now we well i don't yeah i know I, I guess i will talk about that i haven't told that but we will have a webinar on india because we india is heating up uh we we are invited by the yeah, to go and see the Indian Central Bank, uh, and 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 that's that that's interesting uh, yeah. for sure uh, because they they are the central bank and 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 um, payments is a regulated thing, uh, so you need to um, uh, yes, uh, well, whatever the central bank says, they they are sorry to control. So we we yeah we have we have a meeting with them, which is uh, I think um, an um, an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, but also we we are already talking to some of the private players as well in India, as we have been said for a long time, and it's. It's cooking there, and and this yeah. is the hottest market in the world. So it's it, it is extremely exciting. And these are example of of changes that just happened recently. These are new relations. Things are happening. You are adapting and adopting. Well, it's mo it's moving all the time. Uh, it, it's certainly moving all the time, uh, and and it's a very changing environment. And uh, and we need to be on our toes, not just from a product perspective, but also from a market perspective. But and as Patrick said, we 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 need to be on our toes, continue to be there. But I think that's one of our strengths to actually to be that. To be that adaptive company, and and we will just need to continue being that. Otherwise, we won't succeed. Okay, uh, I realise we have one question uh, uh, coming in from from a viewer, uh, and uh, it's Svante Lind, and he he's writing. Uh, this will be the last question of this webinar. I'm really impressed that Crunchfish has not. Uh, has got going and are a big fan of these webinars with a lot going on at the moment and great plans ahead. Is this somewhat of a make it or break it for Crunchfish? Is there a possible outcome where CF can't just uh, can can't adjust and DC uh, and gestures will fall flat? Or do you guys estimate that your portfolio patents pending, etc., um, that such uh, outcome is pretty slim. Do you get the question? Yeah, I, I, it was a good question. I, I, I really don't think it is uh, make it or break it uh, in that sense. I think there are so many opportunities because we, the, the product we have, the platform we have in Little Cash, there is, uh, we have the play for CBDC. We are, we are talking to payment services in, in very different type of payment services. We're talking to the, the banks. And, and, and I think we are, um, I, I, there, there are so many opportunities. So I, I'm not actually that worried that we, uh, that if, if we were to miss one, that oh now that, that nothing will work. I, I I really think it will work, uh, it, and now it's just a matter of time to get the first one and then get the ball rolling. It, that's that's what's going to happen. It's, it's it's more about when. It's it's, it's not about if. Uh, I, I I'm not worried at all about uh, because I think what we delivered is uh, super strong, and and I think we've uh, it, it it is um, yeah we have a great position there. So I'm. It's not make or break it in that sense that this won't fly. It, it will fly. Yes, the question a little bit when, and uh, and we are getting nearer and nearer as, as every day, really. And uh, a question about when, when it's time to stop, that's now for today. <laughs> uh, it's been a great uh, webinar, and I think it's uh, quite uh, astonishing to, to listen to your stories and, and, and to see the possibilities around here. It will be, well, very... Well, uh, inspiring to follow this journey. So let's talk about the upcoming webinars, you are giving. Uh, it's yeah, May. Sure. Yeah, 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 we're into May. Uh, and it's, um, as I said many times, um, let's talk about our pattern portfolio. It's a bit complex, uh, what we have in digital cash. Uh, very strong, 19 uh, pattern uh, sort of, uh, yeah, uh, 19 pattern already, uh, but but it's 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 a bit spread here with some uh, early social innovation as well. But but a lot it's actually extremely applicable to digital cash, and I'll I'll talk about that. Uh, then we will uh, do a, a deep dive into neural nets. Uh, how is gesture actually making decisions? Uh, we'll talk about India. This will be the day before uh, I will leave for India. Uh, Patrick is probably going to come with me as well. 
uh, on that Friday. We, we fly off uh, to India the week after for a round trip. I uh, haven't been back there in two years, so it's going to be interesting. And then uh, on the 28th, we, we, we've just had, 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 have had our annual meeting and, and we, we'll uh, do a, a talk about corporate governance of how we, we uh, I see if I can persuade uh, the 60 year old man, Joran Linda, to do that uh, talk, our, our chairman. I'm not sure, uh, but uh, he certainly have got the challenge from me now. Okay, great. That's, uh, well, that's ahead of us in May. So this is uh, the end, end of today's webinar. Thank you so much, Paul, uh, Patrick, Joachim. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Likewise, you are you, for a lot of it, the cool energy again, Johan. You're doing a ter ter terrific job being a moderator. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so curious. And I think it's quite important because you all represent uh, Crunchfish today. I think it's uh, even though we should have a good time, it's important to get the right answers. So we get the, the, the well, the, the true heart and soul of the company. Uh, so uh, having a joy, but also being serious because this is a, a great opportunity and I'm glad to be with you these Friday mornings. Uh, so that's all for now. Have a good weekend and uh, see you next Friday, uh, if not before that. Thank you everyone for joining in. I hope you had a, well, a good hours um, webinar here. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.